Everybody, it's time. Everybody pay attention. It's about time. I brought my B-Stars shirt just for this occasion. This is my first time ever making a video specifically for furries. What? So this is the first time I've ever made a video that is just uh, specifically furry related. I mean, I didn't make a two and a half hour video about anime, which involved a lot of furries. Um, but like, I wasn't a furry at that point, so. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to mention that I will be making it transitioning from music to a furry YouTuber. And I'm gonna do this by I'm making an easy transition by starting out with, by talking about a musician. I'm just go ahead and get to the intro. Just let's get this started, baby. Furries have existed for centuries. Blah blah blah. I mean, we been new. This isn't about that. I'm here to answer a specific question of whatever happened to the first famous furry. And no, I'm not talking about a cartoon character like Bugs Bunny or like a real life fur suitor like a like a beta, but I'm talking about like the first fursona to get mainstream attention. The first furry to receive worldwide acclaim. And it's just not it's not for being a cartoon character doing cartoon things, but a a, a fursona character that, that was known for being a musician, a sex symbol, and a leader of a group that would influence the music industry forever. Maybe a little bit of over exaggeration, but like, whatever. What are you gonna do? Tell me I'm wrong. I guess you could do that. Yeah, let's just let's just get to the point. In order to get the full story of him, we must go back into the late '80s, 1989 to be exact. The year MC Scat Cat was created by Michael Patterson and Candice. Uh, uh, who got the inspiration from Gene Kelly, who created a music video. He danced with Jerry the Mouse. Yes, this music video would inspire one of the most infamous music videos of the 80s. Or 90s, wh whichever year it came out, I forgot, honestly. Paula Abdul, an icon, wanted to make a music video that would be different. So a label head sought out a video directing team and an animation expert previously mentioned. The creators made the character hip-hop oriented because MC Hammer was gaining popularity at this point. So yeah, that's kind of where they got the MC name from. Which is funny considering how I like the music is, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, uh, Candace claimed in the quote by The Vulture that this would probably help with the huge gulf between black music and white music. And uh, if this is, it's kind of funny considering that Eminem got popular like a decade later. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of problems that I have with MC's Gat Cat that we'll get to in the future regarding the fact that they even set this in the first place. Because it is a very weird thing to say. Keep in mind the creators are white people and they made the character based off of black culture. So it just seems problematic in general. But once again, we'll get to that. So the duo combined all the abilities of Paula Abdul's dancing and added hip hop powder or whatever to make the music video itself. They started by remixing the track and adding in Derek Stevens vocals who would play MC Scat Cat later on. Fun fact, Derek Stevens used a ghostwriter named Romani Malko for all of his other songs. And then all the people would think that the, the person behind MC Scat Cat was Romano Falco. And there was also some people comparing him to Will Smith, which honestly I can completely see. They both do sound alike to like a, a crazy degree. And it took years for people, it took years for Derek Stevens to be uh, revealed as MC Scat Cat. You can thank Steve Nelson for that. Uh, the inspiration for the animation itself came from Hannah Barbera cartoons, and the reason why they chose a cat is because cats are cool. Cool cat, baby. That, I mean, that just shows you how cool cats are. You know, that's it's funny because cats are cool is the exact quote used in the article. They also said, and they don't do what you want. Basically, that whole uh, rebellious feel that cats give off mixed with the whole rebellious nature of black culture at the time and what would happen later in that decade. Which is a bit conflicting, but we'll get to that, I promise. The duo worked with animator Chris Bailey to actually create the character. Apparently there were concept design changes, which means there's actual concept art of MC's Gat Cat that is just somewhere. Uh, the reason for the changes is because of the whole wanting to be more hip-hop oriented 
um, which was harder to do considering this was like the late 80s they were making him. MC Hammer and Rapper's Delight were like the biggest rappers of this era, I think. And after a bunch of compromises though, they basically made him less and less retro, but they actually got the final look. And apparently Eroff, who's that label head, uh, gave Patterson the idea to use the outfit that they were wearing at the time, which is what you see on screen right now. I mean, he was wearing that. You know, the 80s was such a weird time, man. So I've always been curious about how they even got the music video done in the first place. And apparently, they had to animate the cat over the dancer, which is insane to think about. The dancer is Bulu Shrimp, who was an iconic dancer at the time. He basically understood the mission. It made it very easy for the animators with how he knew the more subtle things that would be hard in general in terms of animation. The shot took two days to do, and I'm not kidding when the article says that it legitimately lasted two days. One day lasting 15 hours, and then the second day lasting 24 hours. For this legendary video, I don't particularly blame them. Uh, there were also moments where they would film Abdul and Shrimp dancing side by side, and then they would do a reshoot of it with just Abdul, in which they would animate MC Scat Cat doing the moves that were just done. And fun fact, the floor was slippery, which caused issues to happen. But someone came up with the strategy of spilling Coca-Cola on the floor and then drying it with a hairdryer in order to make the floor not slippery. So, just in case you ever need that, uh, if, if you're on a slippery floor, one thing that'll help is making it sticky with anything that's with you. Which will, very, will come very handy at a furry convention. The animation, which was handmade, was then cleaned up by Bill Melendez, who was known for the Charlie Brown specials. And then the video itself was incredibly successful, with it winning awards, including Best Music Video in the Grammys and a bunch of nominations from the VMAs. The song also has charted at number one on the Billboard charts and is certified gold. The music video propelled MC Scat Cat into the spotlight, and he was given his own project released in 1991 which was under Virgin Records. <laughs> Virgin. Anyways, the project was called The Adventures of MC Scat Cat and the Stray Mob, and it included different characters that would like expand the universe. Yes, there's an MC Scat Cat universe. And I'm gonna tell you the characters involved. So we got Fats, who's fat. We got Taboo, who's the black one. Maestro, who's a mouse. Leo, who's my dog. <laughs> Kathleen and Silk, who I, I don't really have descriptions for them because I don't know which is which and I'm I'm sorry if that's sexist, but legitimately they don't they didn't tell me which characters are which. It's really hard to find that information. Okay, don't judge me. They released Skatstra as the main single, with a music video done by the team from before, and unfortunately the music video didn't do very well. I mean they played it a lot on MTV, but in terms of sales and numbers, it only peaked at 96 on the Billboard charts. And the second single was just straight up canceled. And now we should probably talk about the project itself. Um, it wasn't good. It's sponsor time. Yo, it's been so long since I've done sponsor time because like I had nothing going on. But now I do. I have a new song. Yes, a new song. It's been over a year since I've released the music. It's called Long Distance, and it's on Spotify, it's on YouTube, it's on Apple Music, it's on iTunes, it's on Bandcap, it's on SoundCloud, it's on everything, baby. And it, you, you can find it all in the link below. It'd be really amazing if you supported me, especially you furries. I know you have money. <laughs> um, anybody who streams it or purchases it on any of the other platforms, I highly appreciate you. I just wanted to mention that I have new music out and I'm working on a couple of projects this year, including uh, past music that I just didn't want to release. Um, but yeah, that's that. We'll get back to the video now. Uh, I mean, the fact that the rapper is not even writing their own stuff kind of shows in its album in terms of his shallowness. The production is very one note with it obviously being 80s hip hop mixed with some 80s pop elements, which can work in small doses. But like 50 minutes of cringy bars and moments that just don't age in terms of what it's considered to be overdone tropes in hip hop. It just, it does not work at all. There are moments where I can take in the insanity, which is the concept in general, but there are genuine moments that made me facepalm. 
and I did not even think that was a real thing that people actually did. I thought that was a joke, but no, I, I did it and I thought about doing it. It was crazy. Is it as bad as I made it out to be back then? Probably, but like the whole, the biggest complaint I really have about this in general is the fact that it was the, the, the characters and this design and the concept and just all of this it all started from a couple of white people. I mean, they're basically exploiting black culture and portraying it in a cartoonish way. That just feels off. I'm sorry. I know they didn't make the actual music or, or you know, they did technically make the music video. Ah, Jesus Christ. I, they purposely based them off on black culture and that alone makes this whole project sour overall. I mean, the novelty, yeah, it's fun, but then you consider the context of why they were made in the first place to bridge the, the bridge between white music and black music, and it just comes off as tone deaf. Either way, this was a unique lesson with it being of its time and kind of in its own lane, and I'll forever remember this for being wacky and making me want to die. They didn't give up on MC Scat Cat quite yet, you know, even though the album failed, MTV tried to make him their actual official mascot, apparently. That didn't work out. They also and they also offered him an animated series. That also didn't work out, and you can blame Beavis and Butthead for that. Uh, there were also talks of like an actual movie in the same vein of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Space Jam, but that also never came out. Then there were ideas of a live action slash animation show on Fox. And then that just that, that also just didn't work out. I and mean, there were also like dolls, like they made like merchandise of it. Uh, that also just didn't come out. No merch. Every opportunity of monetization and promotion just completely squandered. Like even Andre 3000 got his own show. Fucking Mike Tyson got his own show. Why didn't MC Scat Cat get his own show? It's truly, it's furry discrimination, but that's for another video. But uh, you're probably wondering, why did it all fail? It's kind of weird, but then you consider that the novelty wore away like not even a year after the music video came out. And then the project came out years later after the actual music video. So, you know, if you think about it, it just kind of makes sense on why they didn't keep pushing him, including the label that was only pushing him because of the success of Paula Abdul who was basically done with her album run. It's a shame that he kind of just dissipated, not even a couple years of his existence, but he wasn't completely done existing. I mean, he has made multiple appearances from all these 90 movies, including Space Jam and a new Chip and Dale movie, which is coming out soon. They're really small roles, but uh, not many people would have noticed but me, but it's not nothing. The animation duo who created him in the first place officially teaches animation at the University of Southern California, and the voice actor for MC Scat Cat, Derek Stevens, works at a radio station called The Current. Okay, so that is the story of MC Scat Cat. Will we see an MC, will we see an MC Scat Cat revival anytime soon? Well, I'm not sure if the voice actor is interested. Um, regarding how old he is at this point, but it would be interesting to see if they ever do, like, revitalize him in some kind of way. An 80s icon. Or 90s icon. No, 80s icon. He's an 80s icon. I guess that is the story of the first famous furry. So before I end the video, I wanted to mention that I have music. I know I made a sponsored section section just for that, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta feed my family, dog. I gotta feed them somehow. <laughs> um, the, yeah, this is the the first video I'm making in terms of furry content, and there would be de there would be a lot more different things. Like I, I definitely have seen people talk about how boring furry YouTube can be, and I want to be the change. I want to make interesting stuff. I have a lot of plans in terms of uh, movie reviews and like talking about people in general. I have a lot of ideas and hopefully they'll come to fruition soon as long as this video does well because if it doesn't, <laughs> I just won't do it at all. Kidding. None of, none of my videos do well. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, give it a like. 
That's the first time I've ever said that. Don't forget to subscribe as well and hit the notification bell. I feel like a real YouTuber now. I'm proud of myself.